This is the Ferrari Portofino. This is a brand new Ferrari. Okay, 0, 060 and 36 is what they said. And so the big thing about the California, which is what you thought this was, um, was it was a hard top convertible 2 plus 2, right? This is a 2 plus 2 hard top convertible, but the uh, California was supposed to be a dog. And this is obviously not a dog, 0, 060 at 3.6. This is a Grand Tour. This reminds you of like a 550 Marinello um, or a 456, but the 456 was also considered a dog, right? So this car looks like and, and has a lot of promise to it and looks like it could be a real Ferrari, what Ferrari is known for, but allow you to take the family around. Something to compete with the Maseratis and the Estins. This is absolutely a beautiful uh, example. Can you tell us about the Portofino? I'm Michael, by the way, and this is Matt. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Matt, how are you? I, uh, I used to know Warner really well. Oh, he was a gem. He was the greatest. I love that man. He was the greatest. It'll make him like yeah, absolutely. No, He's not at all. He's a big yeah. part of the family. Uh, you know, Ferrari World and the, and the Miller family as well. Yeah, so yeah. Werner Pfister was a great uh, salesman, uh, but a great person and a great true, part of the Miller yeah, Motor Cars family. Uh, exactly. Uh, true, true gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and tell us about the Portofino. This is the first time it's been seen in public? Uh, not in public, but the first time we have it. It was launched last year in September uh -huh. in Portofino in Italy. Uh, and then we did an event a couple weeks ago in Manhattan with the whole Ferrari, uh, you know, a tri-state. Uh, uh, region, um, but this is the first time we have it at a dealership here locally. So the knock on the uh, 456, which was a, a coupe uh, GT that had uh, a 2 plus 2 configuration, was that eh, it was really a dog even though it was V12. The same thing with the California. A lot of people said it was just heavy and didn't handle as well as it should have and was slower than it should have been. But it seems like, and certainly looks like, um, and with the 0 to 60 time I just heard, this is a Ferrari all the way through and through. And it so is, and, and, when, and we feel actually the California was as well. Yeah. I think one of the criticisms back in 2009 uh, with the California was that it was maybe not aggressively styled enough. Right? And they thought it was not more, you know, for I liked enough. it a lot, by the way. I love the car, yes. and, and, and when it had, when it launched with 450 horsepower, it was no slouch. Uh, They've done an amazing job during the life cycle of the California with the updates with the California 30 and the T to make it what people wanted and expected, which was great. And the California has been a true success story for Ferrari. It's the yeah, I mean, uh, highest volume selling Ferrari in the history of Ferrari. So the Portofino carries that torch uh, to the next level. You know, the Portofino incorporates a lot of the modern styling of the other lineup, you know, like the A12, et cetera. Uh, and it's a very aggressively styled car. It, it clearly is a Ferrari, right? Uh, and then they've improved it in every way. Uh, you know, 591 horsepower power, Ooh. more Second torque, uh, they added some point. nice styling and, cues you know, with these like mini buttresses and the side four, vents, I mean, it's, it's really um, nice so it's truly a gorgeous car and it you is know, a great successor ago, to the, the California. Cars, it sits a little bit lower I think than the California, uh, it's got aggressive yeah, hood scoops, huge, huge wheels, these must be 20s and, and maybe 21s. They're 20s all around, it's the same size as the California T actually. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it's a 2 plus 2 like you mentioned earlier, uh, so you can fit children in the back, you can fit luggage in the back. V12? Is, is nope, it's really a 3.9 liter best, uh, twin turbo V8. You know, twin turbo okay. V8. Just like the uh, California T, it's just an evolution of that same engine. Is it possible to start it up? Uh, we can. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, okay, hold That would be great. And then we'll ask a couple more questions. Yeah, definitely, because I do have some. This is beautiful, Matt. Look at the fit and finish on this thing. This is what Ferrari's about. It's about fit and finish. Today, this is what Ferrari is about. Drivability, uh, they've become cars that uh, are really reliable, super fast, handle like no other car. And there's the Ferrari sound. Listen to that. Can you give it a little bit of gas? Yep, no problem. He's got to warm it up a little. And I like how uh, Ferrari has added a ton of technology to their cars these days, so that it's got all the creature comforts you'd want as well. Well, not only that, but you take a look at the controls on that steering wheel, in particular the one on the right, the Manantino. That sets the suspension tune. That sets the how quickly the transmission shifts. Uh, basically, everything about the car it changes the entire feel of the car depending on what setting you use. You've even got a uh, passenger uh, touch screen yeah. where they can, so they can uh, scare people, change it, and look at it. Unbelievable. Comfort, sport. I've never seen a car with a touch screen over the glove and box. That, it's pretty everything awesome. Off. And the passenger sees what setting is being used. There you go. 
there you go, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. That is awesome. Manuals become a hot uh, in demand, uh, you know, end of an era type investment. So a lot of the manual cars are worth more than the F1 cars. I mean, from an engineering point of view, you can't dispute that, that the, the F1 gear shift has gotten to the point where it is far superior to a manual, but yet, and the counter argument has been with manuals in general, not just on Ferraris, is that you're removing some of the visceral experience from the car. True, true. A lot of people think that, you know, manuals are making a comeback because there's more engagement, but uh, you'll see with some of the top, top end uh, sports car companies, that they're sticking exclusively to the, the latest engineering, you know? Yeah. It's not just Ferrari. You'll notice that with other brands as well. But, but Ferrari was really pioneered it because they, yep. they've had the F1 gear shift since 98, I believe, on the F355. Yep. 20 years. This is gorgeous. Nicholas Cotto's watching, and he was asking uh, how long it takes to put the top up. Uh, it's a, I can show you, but it's, it's about 20 seconds. Okay, yeah. very, very cool. Can we put it up real quick? Yeah, take this. Um, here, and then uh, I have a couple other questions as well uh, from viewers. So uh, you guys are terrific. So here we go. We're going to watch the top go up. And it's a hard top, which is, I think, really awesome. Um, and that, obviously, with the top down, limits the trunk space, but I think you're always limiting the trunk space in a Ferrari. With the trunk, with the uh, top up, you have a little bit more trunk space. And then it drives like a coupe, and now you've got a coupe. Um, I'm a coupe guy, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. Beautiful lines. You notice the flying buttresses they added? Those gorgeous, accents. gorgeous. Um, what is What does this car start at? It's 214 base price, but a typically equipped Ferrari has about 35 to 45 thousand in options. Uh, so you're looking at around 250-ish. Very nice. Yeah. That's what you would expect from this car. Yeah. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure it's been to meet a pleasure, you. Mike. This thank was you. great. Thank I look forward to doing more stuff with you.